Hello, everyone, and welcome to another daily edition of Litter Media Live. I'm Mike Smith, along with Aaron Glandon, and we are here on a Thursday, December the 14th of 2023. I like that first scene. Was that like a river scene? Did you notice that? The background images? Yeah. I, I saw the trees. I thought the, the river was in front of it. I wasn't it paying attention, it. but it'll come back around. Yeah. Uh, I thought maybe you were uh, rowing your boat down the, the Scioto or, or something like that. But, are you uh, a big canoe or a uh, kayak person? Have never. You've never? Have never kayaked um, or anything like that. Kayaking is fun. I highly recommend it. Uh, my wife is a very good swimmer. But she's terrified of being on a boat on the water. Does that make any sense? No, not really. <laughs> I think it's it's the motions. She gets motion sickness. We oh, were okay. on a well, years ago. She she worked uh, at the uh, one of the uh, car dealers in town, and uh, the, her boss had some of the employees out on a pontoon boat on Paint Creek, and she was as green as the green screen behind us. I thought, because when we talk about, I've talked about, you know, a boat cruise, she wants nothing. She'd rather fly than, than do anything like that. So, I don't get motion sick, which I'm very thankful for. So you are into the canoe and all that? Yeah, I, like, that, to, I like to kayak. Kayaking. My mom really likes to kayak. I can see that in your mother, yes. How about dad? I don't know that he's ever been in a kayak. <laughs> Ah, well, that's water we're talking about. Now we've got snow in the background. We've had uh, a fall view in front of you. So let's talk about what the weather is going to be like as Mike Smith and Aaron Glandon are with you here on our daily show. Sunny skies today and tomorrow. High of 48 today, 52 tomorrow. Clouds and 51 on Saturday. Then the rain moves in on Sunday and Monday with highs those two days in the mid to upper 40s. You've kept busy over the last couple of days with some video projects. I have been keeping busy. And we're going to talk about one of those at the top of the news coming up here shortly. I'm going to talk about it. Yes. You're going to listen. I'm going to listen for a change, which my wife says I do very little. Our program today brought to you by some great sponsors, including Accurate Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, your trusted comfort advisor. Of course, uh, they started out here in the Chillicothe area, but over the 40 plus years that they've been in business they have expanded well beyond the Scioto Valley if you have a need for heating cooling and plumbing give your trusted comfort advisor a call accurate heating cooling and plumbing our financial lives have never been more complex and some decisions just can't wait which is why our KNB Mobility app gives you instant access to the financial tools you need wherever you are. Get a clear picture of all of your accounts, check your daily transactions, receive account alerts, and much more. So no matter where you are or what you are doing, you can make the best decisions for you and your financial goals. Download our Kingston National Bank Mobility app today. You haven't had vodka soda like this. No one has. Made with the world's smoothest vodka plus real juice. New White Claw Vodka Soda. For transportation options in Ross County, call Ross County Health District's Mobility Management Team, 740-779-9652. Find a career you love with Pickaway Ross Adult Education. Skilled trades careers are in high demand with no signs of slowing down. Pickaway Ross offers career training programs with expert instructors and hands-on learning tactics to create a variety of opportunities. Visit our website for more information. Taking a look at the news headlines, I'm going to do like Johnny Carson used to do years ago, tee it up and right over to Aaron Glandon. Well, yesterday was the uh, awarding of the T-Mobile hometown grant downtown Chillicothe. Um, so we gathered around the courthouse and got to see T-Mobile hand a giant check to Tiffany Baldwin of downtown Chillicothe. Um, they're going to have kiosks open up in the spring that will have, they'll be multilingual mm -hmm. for visitors coming to Chillicothe and they'll guide them towards local businesses. And I have a couple of comments from people that were there talking about the event. Downtown Chillicothe is getting a grant today from the T-Mobile Hometown Grant, and that grant is going to allow us to put kiosks in the downtown that are multilingual, 
double-sided and interactive that allow visitors to find our brick and mortar businesses in the downtown with much more ease. This kiosk is going to have the ability to um, project, I think, four or five different languages. Uh, so it'll really help out-of-town visitors that are coming to downtown um, that are from all over the world. So it's pretty cool. Well, we're really excited about uh, this awarding of the grant because not only do we work hand in hand with downtown Chillicothe, but T-Mobile's a member of the chamber as well, and they're a great member. They've sponsored some of our events and done some other things in conjunction with us to help promote our members. Uh, and so this is a great way to meld those two worlds together and then not only that to address a need that we're going to have in the future which is getting people in the knowledge about what our events are and the things that are going on and then directing them in the right places so this really is a perfect fit and it couldn't come at a better time. I think as we see an influx of international tourism uh, you know if we're from Chillicothe or Ross County we just kind of know our way around downtown and we know where to turn and how to find our, our favorite spots and parking spots but if you're from out of town we really want that experience to be fun and welcoming and easy and so uh, thank you to downtown Chillicothe LLC to be Baldwin uh, and of course T-Mobile because this this project really is going it's gonna make it easy to come to Chillicothe it's gonna make it easy to visit our downtown spend money and have fun and so I just think it's a really impactful project and I think it's gonna have a good impact for a long time to come so really exciting for the future of Ross County and Chillicothe there. And this was a grant for $50,000. $50,000. Now, is, is this just one kiosk or? The, there will be multiple kiosks throughout the downtown area. Mm -hmm. And we, did they talk about where in the downtown? I know one will be at the courthouse. I'm not sure where the others will be. Okay. But when they pop up, it'll be rather obvious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, those will be up as soon as the spring, Tiffany Baldwin said. Ah. Very good. So uh, come warm weather and the time to start walking the sidewalks of Chillicothe to see the great sights, you'll see some of those kiosks. Also in news uh, today, Chillicothe's Drew Musser participating in the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party this Saturday. And Dan Ramey caught up with Drew to talk about that. Historically. Well, it, it, um, it, when I bought, when we bought this house um, and learned of the history of this home and found out that the house had been built originally by a Bostonian, Nathaniel Willis, um, who had been a participant in the Boston Tea Party when he was 18. Um, obviously, I was hooked on that. I mean, the, the 18th century has been my passion ever since I've been a child. And so um, that was an instant, um, I get it now. This house called to us more so than me to them. And um, it wasn't really until May of this year when the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museums and the Massachusetts Historical Society came to Chillicothe to commemorate Nathaniel Willis's grave as a participant that I learned I could be a, I, they invited me to be on the ships to, um, and I reenact 18th century, so it was a perfect fit, so. What a neat experience uh, that uh, Drew's going to get to participate in that. Of course, we've had our local observance of the, the Boston Tea Party and that uh, exhibit they have up at the uh, First Presbyterian Church. But this is the real deal in Boston Harbor. He'll be on that on December the 16th to participate. Now, we'll give you a little tease. There's another story involving Drew Musser and the Willis James Bed and Breakfast. That story will go hot on our website, littermedia.com in about five minutes, and we'll talk about it tomorrow morning on the show. The Ross County Water Company soon will have a new tool to help encourage business development thanks to a grant from Floor BWXT. FBP donated $13,750 to the dynamic water study that will enable various scenarios for future development here in Ross County, so a big deal for the uh, companies that will be participating in the use of more water for their businesses. The Ohio Fair Managers Association has released the 2024 schedule of county fairs. And as always, for our area, the Pickaway County Fair will get things started in 2024. Uh, they have their weekend preview shows uh, starting on Saturday, June 15th, and the fair gets underway officially on Sunday, and that will run through June the 22nd. Now, the Ross County Fair 
in 2024 will be August 3rd through the 10th. The Pike County Fair is the week before that. And, of course, the Fairfield County Fair over in Lancaster wraps things up for all Ohio County Fairs in the month of October. When it comes to decorating... For the uh, holiday season, State Fire Marshal reminds all Ohioans to stay safe during the festive season. According to the National Fire Protection Association, one of every three home Christmas tree fires is caused by electrical problems. Christmas tree fires are more serious than typical home fires, with one of every 31 reported Christmas tree fires actually resulting in a fatality. And on average, just one in 144 typical home fires do so. So probably more of these, Aaron, I'd say, are live Christmas trees. And we don't want to discourage you from using a live tree, but you got to make sure you'll water those things. Yeah. Our, we have a live tree, and it's outside on our deck. Mm-hmm. But try to keep it watered as often as possible. Yeah. As uh, Gary Burbank's character on the radio used to say, put some water in it. <laughs> sure. This Saturday, the Knights of Columbus Council 15793 will host a drive through food distribution, which they do each month. It'll run from 10 a.m. until noon behind St. Peter's Church in the corner of Church and Water. Ross County residents in need of food are invited to enter the parking lot using the Church Street entrance and exit on to Water Street. They also have diapers and wipes available for uh, newborns through age six, and baby food will be there as supplies last. But please don't arrive any earlier than 10, because if you do, you'll just block traffic. So try to show up at 10 o'clock, and that runs until noon. Also, a story that's coming up tomorrow uh, will be an event that I just attended on a college and career fair uh, out at Zane Trace this morning. And Tomorrow morning on the program at 11, we'll be hearing from uh, Zane Trace Principal Josh Jones about the first year of this and the success of what they were trying to show high schoolers about possible careers. That's tomorrow on the daily program on Litter Media Live. When we come back, we'll look at sports all coming up. Scioto Valley Dumpsters, your your place for getting a dumpster to clean up that mess around your property. Now, Aaron, I know when you went to college, your parents could have probably used an orange dumpster. Oh, they probably to clean could have. your room. <laughs> to clean. Now, when you moved out of the house, was it that way? Uh, no, I. We did a pretty good job of getting everything out of my room. My mom still is getting on me. Come get this last stuff out of your room. <laughs> but it's stuff that I don't want. I well, said, if it's still there, then just throw it away. If you go to visit mom and dad and they see one of these orange dumpsters, you know you lost whatever you had. But if you need a, a free price quote, right over the telephone, give them a call. 253-8389, Scioto Valley Dumpsters. Sports coming up. Each week, Litter Media presents the Neil Coleman Insurance Wyandotte Mutual Player of the Week. If you have an athlete to nominate, any amateur athlete is eligible. Simply visit littermedia.com and click on Player of the Week. At the end of the year, we'll announce the Player of the Year. Make your nominations now at littermedia.com. Click on Player of the Week. It's time to get serious about your lawn. It's time to step up to the best mower brand money can buy. For nearly four decades, Skag has been the easy choice for lawn care professionals. Don't settle for anything less than simply the best when it comes to mowing your lawn. There's sure to be a Skag model that's perfect for your yard, big or small. Make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. Visit your local Skag dealer today. Skag, simply the best. And uh, sports, of course, so you, you saw the commercial or promo there a minute ago about our uh, Athlete of the Week. That's coming up at noon today on our Litter Media Radio Game of the Week preview show. That's at noon today. We'll talk about both teams and also announce our Athlete of the Week. High school basketball last night. Boys and girls were in action. Actually, just a couple of the guys' uh, games uh, were being played. That was Chillicothe. They went down to Greenup, Kentucky, and came away a winner, 70-47. Cooper Stone King, second game in a row that he's had double figures, but he had 23 last night. 
White Oak, a win, or White Oak, White Hall was a winner over Logan, 44-39. One FAC girls uh, game last night as far as league play. Jackson beat Hillsborough, 44-35. Uh, non-conference games, Adina, Circleville, Logan Elm, Washington Courthouse, uh, Wheelersburg lost. Lancaster Fisher Catholic, Lancaster were winners. Sheridan, ooh, looky there. Jamison Stinson saw this young lady play last year. She had 31 points. That's the team that Uniota knocked off on that tip in at the buzzer by Miley Smith in the district final. Sheridan's tough again this year, Lady Sherman, so beware. They were the winner last night, and so was New Lexington. More girls basketball tonight. You can always find those finals on our website, score page at littermedia.com. Big news out of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. There's been some rumblings about this for a while. Well, now they're talking serious. OHSAA board of directors and staff have been discussing expanding tournament divisions in several sports. As you know, football is already seven divisions. Most of the other sports are anywhere from three to four divisions. Well, the OHSAA will hold statewide meetings in January to present data and other feedback and gather feedback on the topic which seeks to address the wide enrollment differences from the top to bottom of the current divisional structure. Changes could mirror the OHSA's current football model, which puts a smaller number of the state's largest schools in Division I. The Board of Directors could act on a proposal as soon as early 2024 for next school year. And some of the discussion is that volleyball, basketball, baseball, softball could have anywhere, instead of four divisions, could have anywhere from five to seven divisions to try to make it more competitive. So you could, there's the potential for almost doubling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, some people will ask, well, what about track? That's not, that's not being discussed right now. If they decide to move forward with these sports, there's a possibility you could see track uh, have some of their division numbers added on to later on. But those meetings will be coming up around the state starting next month. Our Litter Media Radio Game of the Week tomorrow night, which we'll be previewing uh, coming up here on our uh, Facebook Live show at noon. That will be boys basketball as we get into the SVC for the first time in basketball season. Adina at Uniota will save our thoughts and comments on that matchup during the preview show at 12 noon. Aunt Ruth, be watching. On this date in history, we're going back to 1863, talking about your favorite president. All that's coming up next on Litter Media Live. At Rathkamp Financial, we provide wealth management services that may ease clients' fears of financial loss and help them retire comfortably. Our greatest satisfaction comes from working with clients for many years and helping them realize their dreams. This is Andy Tomlinson. When insuring what's important to you, our agents are there when you need us the most. Tomlinson Insurance, for the best coverage at the best cost. Visit us online at tomlinsonins.com to learn more. Whenever I first applied for the Archways opportunity, oh, do I have to pay this back? Do I have to do that? Like, is it a loan? And it's not. It's a scholarship. A goal of mine is to graduate college debt-free. If you're a crew member, you get $2,500 a year, and if you're a manager, you get $3,000. And especially if you're going locally to college, like to the branch or something like that, it's really helpful. Mike Smith and Aaron Glandon with you here on uh, Litter Media Live. Dan, by the way, is on assignment uh, today and tomorrow, but he'll be out and about um, at some of the ball games uh, tomorrow night, which we'll, again, talk more about that later. Going to this date in history in 1863, Abraham Lincoln. I don't think I had ever heard this story. He announces a grant of amnesty for Emily Todd Helm his wife, Mary Lincoln's half-sister, and the widow of a Confederate general. The pardon was one of the first under Lincoln's proclamation of amnesty and reconstruction, which he had announced less than a week before. The plan, the president's blueprint for the reintegration of the South into the Union, 
allowed for former Confederates to be granted amnesty if they took an oath to the United States. Now, the option was open to all, but the highest officials of the Confederacy, they were excluded. Lincoln's sister-in-law received the pardon, but never took the required oath. Hmm. So does that mean that she should have had her pardon taken away? Yeah, she should have been kicked back down to the South. <laughs> now you just got your mom upset. <laughs> when I asked my mom who her favorite president is, she says Jefferson Davis because she's from oh, Mississippi. You traitor. She's just messing with us. Yeah, she's, just, she's probably really a Lincoln fan. I actually, I don't know who her real favorite president is. You know, uh, they say, uh, historically speaking, that many people in the South after the Civil War really loved General Grant because of his policies. Of course, it, they were Lincoln's policies that Grant carried out as a general post-Civil War and then into his presidential right. administration that really tried to help free the South from some of the burden that was put on them after the war. Well, they really don't like Sherman. Correct. Do you know what they call the, the Civil War down there? What they, what they teach it? Uh, the war against the states or they, between the states? They call it the War of Northern Aggression. No, Northern Aggression. Oh. I remember when my uh, brother Mark and his wife moved to Mercer College. He was a professor down there, which is in... Um, Oh, uh, Macon, mm. Macon, Georgia. <laughs> when the movie Gettysburg came out, it became a TV movie, but originally it was released in the theaters. And when the movie was over, there was an older lady sitting behind them. And my sister-in-law said the woman got up in a huff and said, well, if they're going to tell the story that way. <laughs> I thought, oh, my gosh. You also, you ask them what, what it's about, and they say, oh, states' rights. Yeah. And then you say, states' rights to what? And they don't like that. Oh, they don't want to go there. Yeah, they don't want to go there. So that is uh, what happened. So I guess if uh, uh, if Hunter Biden gets into some legal trouble, there's a precedent that's been set of a president pardoning a relative, and that goes back to 1863. Uh, last time we were on this show uh, alone together without Dan, uh, we had a movie review from you, but you said you haven't been to any movies lately. I haven't been to see anything in theaters this week. Uh, I did watch one movie earlier this week, and it was, it was probably the weirdest movie I've ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, this was on TV? That, yeah, I just streamed it. Uh, it's from 2001. It's called Mulholland Drive. Have you ever heard of it? Uh, for some reason, I think I have, but I don't know anything about the story. Well, even after watching the movie, I don't know anything about the story. <laughs> so. <laughs> so what kind of a rating would you give? On a five star with five being fantastic. I gave it five stars because it was really intriguing and it i've been thinking about it ever since i saw it because the way have you david lynch is the director have you heard of this guy mm, i've heard of him but i don't know any he had a tv work. show in the 90s twin peaks okay um, i've never heard of that but he kind of the way he makes movies he tries to make them feel like a dream mm. where you know in your dreams you have all these things going on and they don't really connect or make sense but it still makes you feel something <laughs> I hate those kind of dreams, so I probably wouldn't go see any of his movies. I like the good, happy ending, you know, um, boy gets girl and, you know, all that good stuff. You wouldn't like this movie. The good guys win, you know, those there was, are mine. There was one part that was probably the scariest, like, jump scare in a movie that I've ever experienced. Really? And it wasn't a horror movie. Yeah. So I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. Uh, now, you are you like history. Uh, you love movies. But I have been surprised already in some of our brief discussions at some of the movies that I would have thought without question you would have seen already that you have not seen. Well, there's a lot of movies out there. Well, but I mean, these are iconic movies. I'm going to have to put a list together. And, okay. And you're going to have to check off seeing it, not seeing it. And then maybe next week or maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, because we'll be here doing the show tomorrow. I want to see if you've seen some of what anybody that knows anything about movies would refer to as iconic movies. Okay. Please tell me you've seen The Wizard of Oz. I've seen The Wizard of Oz. Thank God. I don't like The Wizard of Oz. Well, I've I didn't, seen The Wizard of Oz. You don't have to like it, but, you know, at least you've seen it. Okay. Very good. Well, that's going to cover our daily program today. Don't forget that Aaron and I will be back at noon today right here on Facebook Live for our Litter Media Radio Game of the Week 
preview show. That's all coming up here on Litter Media Live.